back to another episode of the Behavioral Economics and Marketing Podcast Series. This is Sandra thomas Commonall. In this episode, we are talking about how the effect heuristic affects market research. So jumping in, what is the effect heuristic? The effect heuristic represents a reliance on good or bad feelings that are experienced in relation to a stimulus. Effect-based evaluations are quick, automatic, and rooted in experiential thought that is activated prior to reflective judgments. It is a mental shortcut that allows people to make decisions and solve problems quickly and efficiently, in which current emotions such as fear, pleasure, surprise, influences our decisions. In short, effect heuristic is the equivalent of going with your gut. The effect heuristic is typically used while judging the risks and benefits of something and depends on the positive or negative feelings that people associate with a stimulus. So if your current feelings towards an activity are positive, then you are more likely to judge the risks as low and the benefits as high. For example, imagine just having read a book about the Rwandan genocide, then Out of the blue, a friend calls and, oddly enough, asks you if you want to travel to Rwanda in the near future. Most likely, your off-the-cuff answer would be no. Your current negative attitude towards Rwanda would cloud your vision, and you wouldn't consider the breathtaking national parks, the breadth of wildlife, and the once-in-a-lifetime experience of a visit to Rwanda. The effect heuristic is especially true under conditions of time pressure. This leads to a more negative risk-benefit correlation than would be evident without the time pressure. In the same vein, have you ever listened to a song or gazed upon a painting and noticed it was more negative or positive than you had thought in the past? Research has shown that if you're feeling positive, you will look upon a painting with a similar emotion and see a happy scene. Conversely, if you're in a bad mood, you either point out the negatives of the painting or create your own interpretation of it to fit how you feel. As a quick thought experiment, consider the famous Rorschach inkblot test. The inkblot test is a psychological test in which subjects' perceptions of inkblots are recorded and then analyzed to examine a person's personality characteristics and emotional functioning. Over the years, the Rorschach test has faced many criticisms, from questions being framed by the test giver to the test giver writing their interpretation into the result. One such criticism is the effect heuristic. Consider one of the most famous inkblot cards. It looks like a winged creature such as a bat, a butterfly, or a moth. And depending on the current mood of the test taker, they may see the inkblot as a bat or a butterfly. Whereas if their mood changes, maybe later in the day or next week or month, so would their perception of that same ink plot. And this is a great example of how the effect heuristic can alter your perception. So let's apply the effect heuristic to market research. Effect heuristic is all about how someone feels at the moment, in general, and specifically towards a particular subject or stimulus. One of the important keys here is at the moment, meaning that given a different set of circumstances or different framing, the response could vary greatly. For example, if a subject was to read an article about the negative effects of tourism on animals in a particular destination, and then interviewed about their wants to travel to that country, the responses would be negative. However, if instead the article shows the destination in a positive light, it would skew the responses towards the positive. When conducting market research, it is important to understand how the effect heuristic and transitory personal biases of the subjects will sway their responses in the immediate. When considering any market research, the researchers should understand the margin of error due to false information and seek to mitigate it. There are several reasons why subjects give false information during market research. Subjects can boast, become defensive, want to be socially accepted and acceptable, want to be polite, they're in a hurry, they're annoyed or downright mischievous, they can't always predict their future actions, or they simply forget. Effect heuristic really describes the fact that subjects can't always predict their future actions, desires, and motivations accurately. 
To mitigate the effect of effect heuristic, marketing research professionals should make sure that their data collection methods are sound. This means to make sure that the sample selected is indicative of the population and not cherry-picked. The questions are not framed so as to sway the answers and avoid common survey mistakes such as asking loaded questions, leading questions, and double-barreled questions. Beyond ensuring sound methodology, it is important for market research professionals to understand how effect heuristic may alter a subject's response to your market research. If you are unsure, ask other market research professionals. Peer-reviewed research is always going to lead to better results. Lastly, depending on the subject matter of your research, marketing professionals may find it helpful to inoculate their subjects with neutral information. Wrapping it up, understanding how we as humans make decisions is an important part of marketing. Behavioral economics is the study of decision making and can give keen insight into buyer behavior and help to shape your marketing mix. The effect heuristic represents a reliance on good or bad feelings experienced in relation to a stimulus and is typically used while judging the risks and benefits of something. The effect heuristic is a hurdle in marketing research that can skew results. To overcome this hurdle, market researchers should make sure that their data collection methods are sound. They should understand the ways that their subjects' current attitudes can skew results, and they should seek out peers to review their research. Thank you for listening to another episode of Behavioral Economics and Marketing. This is Sandra Thomas-Gamenaugh.